all of us are searching, knowingly or unknowingly, for enlightenment, truth, and harmony in our lives. This program, hosted by Dr. Gregory Penn, will help you aspire to a more fulfilling and rewarding life. Well, hello and welcome back to Aspire Unplugged. This is the last episode. Can you believe it? After 30 years. I know. This is, it all comes down to this, this program. I know. And think about all the lives you've touched along the way, the people that you've had influence with and tried to help. Tried. Uh, do you think you're going to retire after this? No, I'm going to go on doing my work and helping my students. I'm going to move. I, I'm the type of guy who probably die with his boots on. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, what else would I do? Mm -hmm. You know, nobody'd have me. Yeah, you don't want to go play shuffleboard someplace no. at a nice retirement home. And no, and I don't want to screw go those tra people up. <laughs> I don't want to go traveling and see. You know, I don't have a bucket list. Okay. No. All right. That you would are, be. You are the bucket. I am. I'm the bucket, and I'm the list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this show is about uh, the future, the state of the world. Where are we at right now on the planet? And uh, are you optimistic about the future? I'm not optimistic, but I'm not pessimistic. I am a realist about things. I think if you, you know, Jacques Cousteau said so, so well, any or, uh, organism that um, overpopulates implodes upon itself. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna implode. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that means. I, I really don't, I, I really don't know. It, read Homo Deus. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that would probably tell you the best by Vaharia. I, I honestly think that would be the more intelligent route. I am not a soothsayer, but I do know this. We are overpopulated, and it is causing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And people keep making babies, mm -hmm. thinking that doesn't matter. I want my baby. I want two babies. I want three babies. I want grandchildren. I want great grand. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's take a look at a clip. Uh, this is a, from a recent virtual dialogue that you had, kind of that touches on this topic. So take a look. So when you look at things, you don't hear what's going on. You only see what's going on. With all of this being said, in the background is the collective unconscious, which is stronger now than it has ever been in my lifetime. I have never seen the collective uh, not only strong, it is pulsing, but it is addictive and it's contagious and it's you have it in you. So when you look at something, the only thing you'll hear is what the collective is formulating for you and telling you to believe in. Things are not good on the earth. People are not kind on the earth. The weather has, we've corrupted the whole planet. Nothing is the way it should be in falling in alignment with some sense of harmony. We just don't have that. So all you see is what you hear from the collective unconscious. If you were meditative, if you had developed a sense of the solitary in you, you would understand the collective, but you wouldn't respond to it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't suck its tit and think you were getting nourished, because you're not. You're being killed. It's poison. And there are a lot of people who love their poison. Mm. What would we do without poison? <laughs> really, think about it. Movies have to have two things, sex and violence. That's all the way we do it. Poison, drugs, alcohol, the disintegration of a person's life we we're always very in, interested in that yeah you know well it's you, the world we got how do we live in it carefully mindfully <clears throat> heartfelt consciously mm -hmm. that don't get caught up in the uh, the melu of it all mm -hmm. if, if you do 
your your stomach. And the problem is that people have made commitments um, by having children and large families, and that puts them in the position of the collective and the pedestrian mentality. And uh, the, the commitment to their children, which I understand, becomes the totality of their life. And now it's easy, you know, when uh, you have a huge family and you have to take care of them and you have to buy food for them and all of that to uh, lose your way very quickly, really lose your way. I hear me the way I sound to the average person. I hear it. Mm -hmm. I hear me talking. Mm -hmm. Like right now, I hear me. I hear how crazy I sound, how um, stupid. You know, I, I'm not going to give up having kids. I'm not my one, my grandma. You know, I, I understand how I sound. I do. And um, I can't help that. That's why we are the way we are and where we are in this world, because people don't, they don't listen. Mm -hmm. So I understand I, I, I'm a small voice in the wilderness crying. I, I do. But you also agree that you, to, to find your spirituality or find your uh, enlightenment or what have you, you don't have to give up your family. You can still live in that space oh, and yeah. still love them and be an loving. If you can make your, your house an ashram, mm -hmm. if you can do that, I always tell my students, make your house an ashram. Ah. And yeah, you, you absolutely can. But the trouble is, see, people don't understand what it means to have babies. When you have babies, you're bringing in entities you know nothing about. They're there. You don't know if you brought in a Charles Manson or a Mahatma Gandhi. You don't know. More, more in between, but you got to understand the worst, most terrible person in the world had a mother and a father, and they didn't know. So parents don't know how to raise their children. These iPhones and devices raise children. Mm -hmm. And society reigns, raises them, not the parents. They have nothing to say. Parents basically get married, have babies, and then give it to the school. And you raise my kid. Yeah. yeah. I know this because I've got students that work in private schools. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they do. They got tons of money, and they just drop the kid off. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Or the nannies. Do you know how? Of, yeah, yeah. Or or nanny. Do you know how old these kids are? Three years old. Yeah. Four years old. That's crazy. And they got all the money in the world. They don't have to work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. I, it's another Bentley in the garage. Yes, to brag on. Yes, it is. It's another thing to check off my mm -hmm. list too. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we talked about this being the Vedic or Hindu Kali Yuga stage Kali Yuga, yeah. of humanity. Yeah, we and the, are. Uh, the the Atlantic. Re magazine recently uh, wrote an article that kind of touched on this and here's an interesting thing um, they likened the current state of the world with the biblical tower of Babel where we wander amid the ruins disoriented unable to speak the same language or recognize the same truth I totally agree with that we're in a we're in a terrible place and people don't realize that we're always on the verge of war we have nuclear weapons in the hands of insane people. There's more mental illness in our country, and I would imagine the world, than we can imagine. Kids going in and shooting kids in school. Mm -hmm. What is that? In my era, my day, that would never be even thought of. Mm -hmm. It all started when they killed JFK in front of us. That's when the whole thing started. And I knew when that happened, I was 12, and I knew, I knew, I said to my mother, this is the beginning of a lot of things. Hmm. Well, you spoke to uh, population growth. I mean, it, look at this graph here. This is the size of the world population over the last 1,200 years. Very, very flat up until the year 1700 when there was 600 million people. And now today, we're about 8 billion people. That is a lot of growth in just, what, 300 years? Well, it shows that we have a devotion to sex. 
<laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, boy, we're like uh, bunnies. Yeah, I mean, that's all town. we think about. Two things. I said it earlier. Yeah. Sex and money. In that order. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, these, we, it's our DNA. It's our biology. If you read Homo Deus, you read Sapiens, you'll learn a lot about the history of humanity. And after that, if you can get through Robert Sapolsky's beautiful book, Behave, you'll have a lot of insight. It's, it can be, you know, for the pedestrian mentality that isn't very intelligent, which covers the gamut of a lot of us here in America, <laughs> uh, it can be depressing. Mm-hmm. It, it, how can you have hope for the future when you're blowing the candle out all the yeah. time? Yeah. You know, light it, light it. Yeah. Well, if this is the end times for humanity, well, this, I don't know that. And this go around, yeah. You know, um, what happens to all the souls of the earth? I we, mean, if we have you nuclear, mean the entities, the entities, they're you know, not souls. They're not souls. No, if they'd been souls, we wouldn't be where we are. Mm. We are entities. We travel the universe all around in many different forms. We've taken many different forms, all of us. One of the things that I remember listening to um, Buddhist teachers and Bhagwan in India and Muktananda and uh, Nisar Sagata talking about the whole idea that all of this happens not as a consequence to our goodness, but as a consequence of our humanity. Buddha was very outspoken about it, and so was Jesus. You know, he he said, I didn't come to bring peace on earth, but rather war and division. Hmm. Wow. And he was wow. and the war and division was in here, mm-hmm. not out here. But see, people don't they take everything so literally. Hundred Christian soldiers. Oh <laughs> boy. Oh, horrible song. And that's the way Christians look at it. Then they get political, mm-hmm. and then we have what we have now. And it, we're we're mentally ill. We have this country is mentally ill. Look who we elect. They're all a bunch of sickos. Hmm. All of them. Well, the period of time, you know, in the Vedic scriptures or whatever. Right. Says that after we get through Kali Yuga, we if go we, into Dwapara Yuga? Yes. Or the Golden Age? Golden Age. What does that look like? I don't know. I don't know if I'll be here for it ever, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. I can't tell you because I don't know. Think but that resets the population? I, who knows? You know? Maybe we need a nuclear bomb or two and reset the, the Earth. I, I'd hate to think that, wow. but I really would. But, um, I mean, right now, Putin's got his thumb on the... On the trigger. It doesn't even need to be a nuclear no, it bomb. Doesn't. It's, it can be the climate. It could be lack of arable farming land because it's all dried to a I was talking to one crisp. of my students and I said, you know, um, Al Gore was right. And he said, screw Al Gore. See what I mean? Inconvenient truth. Yeah. You know, that that's that's what I have to deal with. You know, there's, oh, I'll sit there and meditate. But in the side of them, they're, they're going, you know, I'm not going to. You know, I'm not going to do anything to help the earth. Yeah. I'm not going to do anything to emit love, compassion. That this we're dual. We we have duality, dual mind, dual thinking, and and we're we don't tell the truth. Again, I reiterate the depth of our mental illness goes into from past lives into this world, and we just keep it going because it's natural. Mm-hmm. All right, this is our last show. If you have one key message you want to deliver to the world right here, right now, what would that be? Let love live you. That would be... I just got chills when you said that. That's what my message would be. Let's get those bumper stickers printed right now. <laughs> <laughs> As if that would do any good. I know. You know, people would say, well, I love my family and everybody. I, I let love love me. You know, they just, mm-hmm. la, 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 la. and then they turn on the TV to some terrible program that feeds their mind pain. Mm-hmm. I, I want to say, you know, to you, uh, it has been an honor. What, what people don't know is this is a family business that you have. Your wife is running camera. Your best friend is running 
camera and your kids have worked on the set. And I've always admired the way you guys ran everything for Aspire Through um, integrity. There was a lot of integrity in your work. And I, I don't know if I could ever thank you enough. I've Money would never show you how much I love you. Hmm. Because I don't have words for that. Greg admires you, but Siraj inside adores you. And your wife and even the shredder over there to work as hard as he does. And I tonight we're going out to dinner on me. <laughs> and it's our, our, our last dinner, our last supper, as That's I'm right. calling it. <laughs> and um, see you in the golden age. <laughs> is yeah, maybe in the golden age. But I, I wanna thank you oh, for putting thank up you. with thank me. Thank you. It is my supreme honor to have been involved in the show all these years and part of the legacy that you're leaving behind and um just thank you so much my for all honor. that thank you audience for supporting watching we'll be on youtube uh, until probably ever until youtube goes off the air if it ever does and i uh, hope uh, you will enjoy it i will still be working till the day i die I'd also like to thank all the people that have supported the show over the yes. years. We couldn't have done it without you. And True. I'd like to thank even the early B&B uh, &B communications. I'd like to thank Frontline Video. I'd like to yes. thank Scott and Marcy Madden and uh, our wonderful crew. Um, and and uh, all of your, your people, your students, uh, have been great friends of the show, too. And, yeah. And especially Doshi. Who and, takes care of me. Yep. And Wendy, you know, I mean. Yeah, uh, takes care of me. It, it's just been a wonderful group of people to, to be associated with. And thank you again. My honor. All right, everyone. This is Aspire Unplugged. And we're unplugged. It's unplugging right now. <laughs> <laughs> so long. <laughs> <laughs>